Hey guys, welcome to Total Health Live with Dr. Sedano. I'm Dr. Nick Sedano, and thank you so much for being here today and taking time out of your busy day to listen to uh, the, the brief seminar that we're going to be talking about. You know, this is a topic that I get a lot of questions about, and it's something that's really in the news now, which is this whole rage about MCT oil. What is it? I mean, is it just some initials? Does it really stand for something? And really, what is the secret behind it? Is it healthy for you? Is it something that you should be taking? Is it something that's actually right for you? And really, what are the benefits? So we're going to break this down today and really dive in deep into what MCT oil really is, and is it good for you, and will it benefit for you, and what are the six? We're going to give you six health benefits of it. So a little, little bit of a, you know, uh, insider that it's going to be actually good for you i'll tell you that anyway so where this rage started was actually from a guy named dave asprey and he started the whole bulletproof coffee trend and i'll tell you if you have not had bulletproof coffee you want to try it it's really really good i had it this morning myself and how you make it is you take originally it was basically just coconut oil with butter and coffee so you take one tablespoon of coconut oil two tablespoons of Kerrygold grass-fed butter that has no salt in it, and about 10 ounces of coffee. You mix it in a blender, and it comes out this creamy, amazing coffee drink that tastes as if you put heavy cream in it. And where he came up with this concept was very interesting. He was hiking in Tibet, and he was starting to feel some brain fog, and this when he stumbled across this, this hut, this mud hut, as he said, and he went in and found this Tibetan lady offered him a blend of tea and yak butter. And when she put it together in this blend and he drank it, he said he felt amazing mental clarity. He got energy back. He got his endurance back. And he started to realize it had a lot to do with, number one, the coffee was obviously good for cognitive function. But number two, the butter, the fats that were in this drink were amazing for him. So he came back to the States and started to formulate this idea about bulletproof coffee. So this is where you are hearing really all about MCT oil now. So like I said, today we're going to dive deep into what it is. But first, we need to actually talk about what is the MCT stand for. And it actually stands for medium chain triglycerides. And we all hear about triglycerides. They're also called fatty acids. And fatty acids are a form of saturated fat. And I know you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. I can't take in saturated fat. My doctor said it's terrible for me, and it's probably going to lead to heart disease. And this is probably the biggest reason why we see that it's missing in the standard American diet, which we call the SAD diet, which, by the way, isn't a very good diet at all. We all hear about now the negative benefits or the negative of the American westernized diet and how much disease it's causing around the world. Well, anyway, because of the fact that saturated fats have been so vilified since the the 1950s when Eisenhower had a couple of heart attacks and as a result one of his top advisors named Ansel Keys formulated the lipid you know heart disease hypothesis that heart disease was caused by lipids that it was all these excess fats we had in our diet that created heart disease and because of this the standard you know diet came out that you had to stay away from fats you had to start incorporating more healthy whole grains and we started going everything low fat. And as a result of this, these MCTs have been taken out of our diet. So what exactly is a fatty acid? We hear about these things all the time. And it's not really an acid per se. It's not like hydrochloric acid in your stomach. It's really what we see as a chain of carbons and what we call an acid group. So those of you who took organic chemistry like I did, you know what this means. This CO and OH that's an acid group, and the rest of this is what we call the carbon chain, or the backbone. So this is what a fatty acid looks like. Now, a lot of times you're hearing these, these things about saturated fats and unsaturated fats. Well, what does that mean? I know you probably have it in your mind. You're thinking, well, a saturated fat just sounds gooey and icky. It sounds like it's got all kinds of grease in it. It's just saturated. It's probably dripping with fat. Well, let me tell you this. All saturated fat means is this that you have hydrogens on all the carbons. That's really all it means. It means that with every carbon you see here, and in this case there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten carbon chain, that all the carbons from here down have a hydrogen attached. That's a saturated fat. It's not some disgusting, gooey, 
drippy, lard kind of thing. And an unsaturated fat just means that somewhere along the chain, a carbon molecule has less hydrogens. And what it does is it forms like a double bond. Not that you need some biology experiment or some biology course or chemistry class, but what I'm telling you is this. It just means it has less hydrogen. That's all it is. It's not something scary, so we don't need to worry so much about saturated fats. And in fact, they're really good for you. I'm going to be doing some upcoming episodes on what a saturated fat is and the health benefits of that. So diving into this, then what is then a medium chain fatty acid or an MCT or MCFA? What is that exactly? Well, we can take these carbon chains and we can shrink them down to where we have less carbons in it. So in this case, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight carbons in this chain. That makes it a medium chain triglyceride or medium chain fatty acid. So anywhere from six to 12 carbons makes it a medium chain fatty acid or a medium chain triglyceride, MCT. Now, there's also a long chain triglyceride, LCT, and those are obviously ones over 12. So that just breaks it down. So now you understand what a medium chain triglyceride is. It's just simply a six to as much as 12 carbon chain of fatty acids. That's it. So what are sources of MCTs? Once again, we're hearing all about MCTs now and how important they are and how good they are for you. Where do we get them? What's some good sources of this? We see palm oil. Palm oil is actually a good source. It's not the best source, and I certainly don't recommend it as much as some of the other ones. Now these here, butter, whole milk, and uh, full fat yogurt, and cheeses, you want to make sure that those are from grass-fed cows. And the reason you want them from grass-fed cows is because when cows eat grass, Grass is very high in omega-3 fats and low in omega-6 fats. And we hear about that a lot. We all hear that we want more omega-3s than 6s. So when a cow eats what it's supposed to eat, which is grass, not grain, so when it eats grass, the omega-6 ratio is lower and omega-3 is higher, the way it's supposed to be. Well, what does that mean to you and me? That means that what you're eating is going to be healthier for you. That means that the meat you're eating or the milk you're drinking or the cheese you're consuming or the yogurt that you're eating is actually going to be anti-inflammatory rather than inflammatory. You don't want inflammation in your body. So, once again, these sources here, your butter, your yogurt, your cheeses, and uh, your milks, you want them whole fat, and you want to make sure they're from grass-fed sources. But the best source we see for MCTs <clears throat> is coconuts. Coconuts have been used for centuries by tropical countries, tropical cultures, and there's been no ill effects reported, but yet somehow in our country, because maybe different media sources, they want to promote other types of oils, like vegetable oils, which are not very good oils, we start to get away from what we know is the best oils that have been used for centuries. So coconut oil is one of the best, if not the best source, but about 65% of it is actually MCTs. The rest of it is other types of fats and other types of oils. So what types of MCTs are present in coconut oil? Once again, there's about four of them and they all range from six carbon to 12 carbon chains. So that's what makes it a medium chain triglyceride, an MCT. And what I'm gonna do guys, I'm just gonna Take a quick second, make sure my phone is on here so I can see if there's any questions that you have. Whoops, let me turn the volume off here. I could hear myself. All right, here we are. Keeping it low, all right. So anyway, like I was saying, it's made of a primary four triglycerides. And these four are your caproic acid, caprylic acid, capric acid and lauric acid. Lauric acid makes the most of it, so there's most of it is lauric acid, but the caproic and caprylic are the two smallest. Now why is that important? Why is it important to have a smaller chain? So why is it that the six and the eight are actually a little bit better? Well the reason is, is because of the smaller chain, it's easier to digest. When it's easier to digest, it gets into your system faster and requires less energy. So unfortunately caproic acid is a little bit on the, the bitter side. It doesn't taste as good because it's such a small carbon chain. The better one or the best one is the caprylic acid. The eight carbon chain is the best. So when you're looking for MCT oils, and we're gonna get into that in just a moment, 
One of the ones I got just recently is just the one from, and I'm not <laughs> promoting Whole Foods, but theirs is a good one. It's um, an organic MCT oil. And the cool thing on the back is it's made of mainly caprylic and caproic acid. So those are the two top acids in this one. And those are the ones that I would want. So capric acid is a, 12, a 10 carbon chain and lauric acid is 12. Now, there's a lot of benefits of these different oils or these different MCTs that we're going to dive into now. Number one, so the number one benefit of MCTs is weight loss. You would think, well, wait, how is that possible that I'm going to eat fats and actually lose weight? Well, the reason is, is because the way MCTs are processed, they go through your liver, and when they go through your liver, they're actually converted to something called ketones. Now, some of you who are on the ketogenic diet have maybe heard about this because ketosis is actually a good thing to go into. When you convert your body from a sugar burner to a fat burner, it actually creates a fat burning furnace inside your body. So because they're immediately converted to ketones for energy, they're not being stored as fat. So MT, MCT oils tend to not get stored as fat. Instead, they're used as a fuel source. Number, actually we're still on weight loss. Studies also show that MCTs suppress fat deposition. So you don't want to be depositing fats because of thermogenesis. So because of advanced thermogenesis, your body will not store fats that it takes in as an MCT. Not only that, it avoids fat oxidation. You don't want fats getting rancid and oxidizing in your body. They become toxic. In other words, because they're converted to ketones, it gives you the same benefits of being on a ketogenic diet. Now, I tend to be what we call a cyclical ketogenic diet uh, person. I kind of go in and out. So I go into ketosis for a little while, then I come out. You don't have to be in ketosis all the time. So what I do is just transition from one to the other. Some days I have feast days, some days I'm into ketosis, so that way my body is burning fat. Next, studies also show that capric acid, that's the 10 carbon chain, is effective in burning fat for energy, improves thyroid function, and suppresses appetite. That's a fantastic thing. Anytime you can improve thyroid function, which is one of the uh, glands in your body that helps regulate your metabolism, that's an excellent thing. Caprylic acid, the 8-carbon chain that we talked about earlier, which is one of the better ones, has also been shown to have the same effect as fasting. So when your body is fasting, now I'm not talking about fasting where you're doing it for more than, say, 72, 78 hours. That's when your body can start feeling like it's starving. But something called intermittent fasting is an excellent thing to do because it gets your body to realize that it has to burn fat as a fuel source while you're in your lows where you're not eating. And I do something called intermittent fasting, which means that I don't eat for about 16 hours of the day. Now, you're probably thinking, I don't know if I could do that. I can't fast for 16 hours. That's crazy. Well, what you do is you stop eating the night before at about 8 o'clock and then don't eat till about noon. That's typically what I do. It gets your body secreting more growth hormone, and it's a great way to burn fat. Now, what I tend to do, though, is when I do wake up in the morning, I'll have some of that bulletproof coffee, and that gets rid of the hunger. It also is great for mental clarity, and it's also great for energy. So you may want to do that. Hey, Sean. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for being on the call today or on the show. Number two, it improves energy and endurance. So a lot of athletes are finding today is they're getting away from having all the starches. They're not using the old you know, adage of just, I'm going to eat a pound or two of pasta before a race. Now what they're doing is they're understanding that the body uses ketones from the MCT oils as a cleaner fuel source. So because it's a much cleaner energy source and burns better and has a thermogenic effect, they're using that because it also lasts longer as an energy source than the sugars that are in the starches from, from uh, pasta. So because they're so easily digestible, MCTs produce longer sustained energy and increases your metabolism. So once again, that thermogenic effect, it speeds up your metabolism that we talked about earlier. Number three, it's also great for memory and brain boosting. Why? Because it's a better energy source for your brain. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, wait a minute, I thought that your brain only runs off of glucose. Well, that's old thinking. That's not true. Your body runs really well off of ketones. In fact, it runs even better. And what you'll notice with this is that <clears throat> when you're taking in sugars, it can cause an up and down effect. That's why your body goes through these stages where you have high energy, low energy, high energy, low energy. 
And next thing you know, you're looking for the next sweet drink or cola or looking for a donut or something because your, your body is not on good energy. It's a very poor fuel source. It's what we call a dirty fuel source when you're using things like uh, sugars, breads, rice, pasta, cereals, donuts, bagels, cookies. All these things, muffins, are not really good for you to eat at all. A better fuel source for your brain is MCT oils. They are converted into ketones and they are an excellent fuel source for the brain, preferred over glucose. And here's another thing too, another great benefit. One of the ways they found out these are so good and one of the things they use uh, on, on the ketogenic diet for is patients that have seizures. So seizure patients do a whole lot better on a ketogenic diet and that's for a whole nother seminar. In fact, you can go back and look at some of my previous seminars that we did on ketosis. But it's great to know that MCT oil helps with seizures and it also helps with Alzheimer's because so much of the brain is made of fat. And why not make it with healthier fats? Number four. Number four is it prevents heart disease and high blood pressure. Yes. So MCTs have been shown to be very anti-inflammatory, which I said earlier, as well as increases HDL cholesterol. So anytime you can increase those HDL cholesterols, those high-density lipoproteins, it's got a great effect on the heart. Research has also shows that lauric and capric acids help lower resting heart rate. Research at the Journal of Bioanalysis and Biomedicine said this, consumption of coconut oil, once again, coconut oil is a great source of these medium chain triglycerides, these MCTs. Lauric acid, which is a major component of, in fact, most of it is lauric acid, enhances the high density lipoprotein and decreases the total LDL cholesterol ratio, which results in decreased risk of cardiovascular disease. So once again, even major studies are coming out, and this one was done in 2014, is saying that it helps reduce heart disease, reduce blood pressure, and it's very, very healthy for your heart. So you want to definitely include these in your diet. And by the way, guys, if this is good information and this makes a lot of sense, and you know someone that can really benefit from this, what I want you to do now is love it, but also to more importantly share it. This is information that other people can really benefit from. So if you know of someone that has heart disease or problems with brain fog and things like that, recommend this video to them or share it to them or just put it on your wall and they'll be able to see it. Number five. Number five is it helps improve digestion and nutrient absorption. Why? Because MCT oils have been proven very, very powerful and very good and very beneficial to our microbiome. Okay, all the bacteria that are in our intestines do very, very well on MCT oils rather than the sugars. Both MCT oil and coconut oil are beneficial in balancing the bacteria in the gut and the microbiome. Now, what you want to have, it would be ideal that if 100% of your bacteria in your gut is all beneficial bacteria, but a good ratio other than that is about 85% beneficial bacteria and 15% non-beneficial bacteria. So like I said, once again, if you can get it to 100% of all the good stuff, great, but if not, you at least want to have it 85 to 15. Turns out it has positive effects on our digestive system energy expenditure. We use a tremendous amount of energy on our digestive system, so why not make it easier for you? Help the, the, the gut microbiome, the bacteria, the bugs in our gut, help them do their job easier by using MCT oil to help with digestion. And now, number six. Number six is the fact that these oils have antimicrobial, antibacterial, and antifungal properties. So, lauric and capric acid have antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial properties and have been shown to be very, very effective in fighting bacteria, candida, viruses, and yeast infections. So guys, ladies, this is a great thing to do. What we find is when you're eating too much sugars and it comes in the form of bread or rice, pasta, cereal, grains, those actually feed the yeast, feed the bacteria, feed the, the candida, feed all the different viruses and infections in our bodies. When we start to switch to a cleaner fuel source in the MCT oils, you're going to be a whole lot better off. So see, this is more than just drinking coffee with MCT oil in it or you know your bulletproof coffee. This is all about incorporating these healthy oils into your diet. You could use MCT oils on a salad. You can, I could take it right off a spoon. I mean literally I'll put this right on a spoon and drink it like that. Now some of you might not be able to do well when it comes to uh, 
to oils. You might not like the oil in your mouth, but that's okay. Once again, use a lot of coconut oil. Coconut oil is a great thing. For guys that are on a budget, this is a great one right here. This one's from uh, Kirkland. This is Costco's brand, and it is an organic extra virgin coconut oil. So this is what you want. So once again, incorporate coconut oil in your diet. Incorporate these MCT oils in. Put them in your coffee. Put them on a salad right off the spoon, any way you want it. Incorporating MCT oil in your diet is going to be a fantastic thing to do. And once again, guys, I appreciate all your comments. I love that you like and share our information. If this is really good information to you and you know someone else could benefit, once again, please love the information. Please share it. But get the information out to your friends. I know they will appreciate it. And once again, our purpose is to help you live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. So I thank you for being here today. Watch out for other shows that are coming up. We're back on the air. We kind of got off a little bit because we just moved our office into our new office, and I love it. But, uh, you know, so I kind of stopped doing some shows for a little while. We were just so consumed with moving our office and building out the best office for our patients. But now we're back on the air. Watch out for us because we're going to be bringing you lots of great information. Thanks a lot for being on the show once again, giving you the voice of truth when it comes to health. Have a blessed day. Love you guys and appreciate you. Bye-bye.